Okay, so here's a quick video on how to use Trello to manage a web project or any project for that matter. I've based this very loosely around uh, the Agile methodology and you can see here we've got our uh, what's known as a Kanban board which Trello uses and uh, if we scroll across here you can see that uh, we have a number of columns. And so I'll run through the columns uh, quickly. Uh, the first column is backlog. Backlog is where you put all of the tasks you know you need to do in the project, um, but not the ones that are priority tasks that are to be done next. So the to do next is where you drag the tasks that you want to be working on next. We've actually got quite a bit in to do. I'd be tempted to move some of them back into backlog. Uh, within all of these columns, you can drag and drop cards. So work out what's the most important things and drag them to the top. The next column here is for blocked, and this is where you drag any card that is blocked for one reason or another, and that then allows the team to focus on getting that card unblocked. The next column is the in progress column. So this is where I drag any task that I'm working on, and so this is the place I come back to every time I start working again on the project. I come back to what's in progress work out where it's at and see if I can finish any of it quickly and drag it into the ready to review column. The ready to review column is exactly what it says. It's ready to review. There's quite a few things in here. Uh, you can see that a lot of them are completed by me, so waiting for them to be reviewed by somebody else in the team. Once something is reviewed, it gets moved to the done column. You could potentially archive things here. One of the things I like about done is it uh, gives a sense of satisfaction about being able to see all of the tasks that have been completed. It also allows you to go back to a task fairly easily and access the attachments and any comments um, related to that task. The next column is shelved. This is for tasks that for one reason or another it was decided they wouldn't be done and on this particular board here we've added a discuss and a resources uh, column and so in each of these columns we have Trello cards and as you saw before you can drag a card to another column so let's have a look at a card let's find one that has a few comments uh, and a bit going on. Let's start with this one here. So, this is a Trello card, and you can see here we've got a heading. Uh, it's always good to make um, the heading uh, action oriented to make it a verb. So, I'm actually going to put in here update buttons. It doesn't tell us a lot more in this case, but at least it tells me a little bit more. Now, one important thing here is to not include the entire description in the title. So I've seen Trello boards before where the description is included in the title and it starts to get very, very messy. Let's say that that was all included in there. Um, you can imagine trying to see tasks on this board if everything had all of that information in there. So important to have that part in the description. In this case, that was originally put in the comments. I suggest rather than putting the initial description in, in comments, put the description up here in the description and then use the comments for communicating and clarifying. So underneath the description section, you've got the ability here to comment. And the way you can comment to someone else in the team is by using the at symbol here. And let's start typing uh, someone's details here and you'll see that Meg comes up here. In fact, I do have a comment to write here. Um, at Beck, at David. Okay, letting them know that I've removed this section from the home page and am awaiting details for the book page. So I can click Save or I can click Shift. Oops, sorry, Command Enter to uh, add that comment. And so if we scroll down now to Activity, You'll see here we've got all of the comments um, for this card. 
So coming back up to the top of the card, we can see here we've got members. So these are the people who are involved in this particular card or this task. We've got labels, uh, in this case website and critical, and we've got a due date, which is uh, later this week. Coming to the right side of the card, uh, here we have members. So that's where we add the people who appear over here on the left. And really only add the people who are responsible for getting the task done. I try to keep only one person there, but in some cases you do need to have more than one person. Labels here allow you to uh, add labels related to what the task is for. You can also create new labels here and, and reassign the colors. You could add a checklist in here. Uh, we're not going to do that at this stage. I will go and show you another ticket with checklist on it in a moment. And you can set a due date, which at the moment is set for Thursday the 8th. And you can add attachments. Down here in Actions, uh, I've got uh, Start Timer. This is a Chrome extension that allows me to run my toggle timer for this particular task. I can then move the card to another board or uh, this, another position on this same board. I can copy this card. Uh, I'm already watching it and I can archive it. As I said before, I tend not to archive cards, but move them to the shelved or done columns. And that's pretty much it on uh, Trello cards. Let me close this one and see if we can find one that has a checklist on it. So when a card has a checklist on it, you'll see here it's got a little uh, tick box like this. And in fact, you can see from all of the cards, you can see the ones that uh, I'm viewing, the due date, uh, the description, and that it's got comments. So let's have a quick look here. Uh, in fact, let's move across to this one here. So here we've got a checklist. This looks like it's gone in ready for review, although the checklist has not been fully ticked off. I do in fact know that they were working, so I'm going to tick them off now. Uh, the checklist functionality is a really handy functionality if you wanted to keep track of a whole lot of little items inside of a card. So that's pretty much it on cards. Let's have a quick look at some of the other features here. The first one is the bell up in the top right corner. And if I click on that, you can see all of the activity that's taken place across any Trello boards that I'm involved in. I've then also got this option to show the menu. And the thing I tend to use the most here is the filter cards. And I'll often just filter them by my own name. Or I might want to see how tasks are going for another person. I can also filter by label and say, OK, I want to see just my name and just critical tasks. Let's uncheck that. Uncheck that. Also here, if you scroll down the menu, you can see you've got the option to change backgrounds. Here in More. You've got settings, labels, all sorts of other things that I'll let you explore in your own time. But the main thing really is to be clear on uh, how you move cards between the stages. And obviously the aim of any project is to take all of the tasks from this to-do column and get them to the done column. Thanks for watching another tutorial from Floji. I hope it's been helpful. And may your next web project be a roaring success.